Mitered half laps are just like regular half laps, except that the top face is mitered. So it looks like a simple miter joint from the face, but it has the strength and rigidity of a half lap joint. To make a complete frame, I start by milling my material to length and width. All of my pieces are the same width, but there are two different lengths, too short and too long. I need both of one of those lengths to have mitered ends, and in my case, I'm choosing to miter the shorter pieces. I'm going to need to set my blade height to half the thickness of my material. I take a scrap off cut and make a simple height gauge. I add a stop lock to my miner gauge and I bevel one end of the off cut at 45 degrees. Then I flip the piece over, hold it against that stop lock and make another cut. This will leave a point directly in the center of the material. With that out of the way, I switch my blade out to a flat top grind blade. This will give me a clean square kerf and works perfectly for removing material in situations like this where a dado stack isn't exactly ideal. With my blade swapped out and the height set to half the thickness of my material and locked down, I move the fence back over and set it to the same width as my work pieces. For my first cuts, I'm going to need this blade width shim. This little shim is the exact same width as my saw blade and I'm going to use it to offset my first cut by exactly one blade's width. I place the shim between the fence and one of my mitered work pieces and using a sacrificial piece to help prevent tear out, I make my first cut. Then I'll keep making passes to the right to clear out all the material all the way to the end. Once that end is done, I'll do the exact same thing to the other end of my work piece. Then I'll do the whole process all over again for the second mitered piece. Now I can use those cuts to set up where to start cutting the ends of the longer material. I'll set my miter gauge to 45 degrees and put the short side of one of the mitered pieces against it. Then I'll line up the square part of the cut with the outside of the saw blade's teeth, move my fence over until it just meets the end of the material, and I'll lock it down. It's really important to take your time and make sure everything is just right before making any cuts. Like most things, proper setup will definitely yield better results. With everything set, I'll replace the mitered piece with one of my longer pieces, and I'll make a cut all the way through, again using a scrap piece to prevent tear out. What you should have at this point is a mitered cut that only goes halfway through the material and exits perfectly on the corner of the workpiece. Now I can clear away all the material to the right of that cut, just like I did with the other two pieces. I'll do this to one end of each of the long pieces before moving the miter gauge to the opposite 45 and cutting the other ends the exact same way. There is a bit of setup involved with making mitered half laps, but the process itself doesn't take too long, and what you should be left with is tight, square, strong miters for, well, whatever you need tight, square, strong miters for. And as you can see here, my blade height got a little bit off at some point along the line, since some of the pieces sit a bit proud of the others, but it isn't anything that a quick sanding can't take care of.